Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rafael Barbagallo, uh, PhD student from the University of Catania. And the work I'm going to show you was developed by my supervisor, Professor Giuseppe Mirone, me and our colleague, Domenico Corallo. Uh, the goal of our work was to develop a new young model based on all the three invariants of stress. And so I'm going to show you the formulation of this new uh, yield model, the calibration of this yield model with some experimental data from the literature, and then the simulation we made, the results, and some final conclusions. So, uh, basically, uh, you know that um, a stress state can be identified by a point in the space of the principal stresses. And historically, we define it just using the second invariant of stress expressed by the von Mises equivalent stress. Our proposed model can take into account the, uh, also the other two invariants um, expressed by the triaxiality factor, that is the, the hydrostatic stress uh, over the sigma equivalent. And then uh, the deviatory parameter, parameter x that is linked to the load angle theta. And basically our new stress surface is a mix, a sort of mix of the Tresca and the Vomises ones. And to obtain it we can start from a Tresca-like surface with straight edges connecting the pure shear condition and the pure tensile condition, so the red, the red line. And then we add um, a quadratic amplification in order to have more flexibility. And we obtain the, the purple line here. This is the final surface, yield surface. And to go into some simple math, we can, in this deviatory plane, we can define the, uh, the UV, this UV Cartesian reference system. And with this, this uh, simple uh, formula of a line group passing across two points, we can calculate the, the formula, the function of this red line. And you can see that in this function appears this function, this another function m, that we can obtain directly from the flow curves from tension and pure torsion. So we will see later how. And starting from that, we can uh, calculate the intersection between this red line and a generic, a generic direction uh, corresponding to a theta uh, load angle. And so we can calculate the distance between the, the origin O and the point P. That is, connect is the equivalent stress corresponding to this red line. Then we add this uh, quadratic amplification that uh, in particular this is connected to this parameter QA and we obtain the final, the final equivalent stress, so the distance between the O and Q points. And you can see that in, in this formula the hardening process is inside the flow curve from the shear, so from pure torsion. We have the M function, so the, that is connected to the shape of the surface, and the um, curvature of this curve, is of the purple curve, is connected to the QA parameter. In this case, we are considering a constant parameter. So then we will discuss later uh, why maybe it's useful to, to have also a function here. Uh, we can rearrange this formula to consider not the flow curve from, from torsion, but the more commonly used flow curve from tension to take into account the hardening process. And we will see so uh, the M function, as I said to you, from tension and torsion sets, we can calculate it. And then, uh, by principle, we can calculate all for the polarity amplification just from one tension torsion test. So we just one test with an intermediate load angle. But more reasonably, we are going to uh, calculate this, minimizing the error for, between the simulations and experimental of all the missed tension torsion tests that we have at our disposal. So this is the complete version of the air surface. And we tested this model with uh, some 
experimental data from Alave Dizade, sorry for my bad pronunciation, or from Politecnico di Milano. Uh, they made this uh, complete, very, very complete campaign on titanium alloy grade 5. <coughs> and you can see there, are, there is torsion test, mixed uh, tension torsion test. They made this um, by pretensile, with the pretensile of the spaceman in uh, 20 kN, 30 and 40 for the A20, A30 and A40 test, and then applying torque. And then we have also tensile flat smooth, shear flat butterfly, tensile flat all notched, uh, round smooth, round notched, and uh, the end, uh, also a three point bending test. So um, several tests they can allows, uh, allow us to test the, this model in several different uh, uh, stress conditions with the, the load angles going from zero to 30 degrees and also with uh, different uh, triaxiality. Um, from the data uh, provided in this work from Polytechnic in Milano, we obtained the flow curves from torsion and for tension. tension it is plotted here, and here are the equations we obtained. <coughs> and to test if they were uh, correct, really correct, we made two, um, two simulations. <laughs> Uh, with the classical misses approach, but uh, with the, uh, for, uh, the, for the pure torsion test, we use the Arden function for the torsion for, from pure shear, and for the pure tension test, we use the Arden function for uh, for tension, pure tension, and you can see the perfect agreement. So the the curve, the flow curves were correct. We we could use it for we use them to for our model, and from them we can calculate the function m that I told you. It's uh, the shape. The shape of the yield function is linked to this function. Um, then, uh, we uh, considering the tension torsion test, uh, the torsion test, we could uh, uh, calibrate also the quadratic parameter we have. So, uh, in this image, you can see uh, how the yield surface for this material evolves during the plastic deformation from uh, plastic deformation of 0.02 to 0.6, and you can see how the shape of the function changes in, during this process. So with this model, we implemented this model in a commercial FEM, FEM code, is MSC Mark, uh, with updated, uh, updated Lagrangian funds, the general plasticity. And in particular, we used the Xerix Fortan's user subsidy to implement the other criteria and the assault for turn user subroutine to for the associative plasticity. In the fine models we use the contact surface to impose the tension torsion displacement we wanted. So let's see some results. Uh, these results are uh, macroscopical results, so load is displacement results. In the left part we are we have our model simulation results compared with the experimentals. And in the right part, we have the Mises, classical Mises approach results compared with the, with the experimental. These are all tensile tests plus the three points bending tests. Um, and you can see that in this case, in these cases, the Mises approach is quite good uh, because uh, all the stress states are very similar to the uniaxial tensile stress state. Except this one, this the, is the flat old specimen. You can see the results for the simulation is quite different from the experimental. And this error can be our model fits fits this this this, uh, this, really, this uh, error. And you can see very good agreement be, between uh, the result our and the experimental. But the the real difference is in torsion and mixed tension torsion test. So these are macroscopic, also microscopical plots, but torque rotation plots. And on the left, our model, on the right, the classical Mises approach, and you can see in the black, the black lines are the torsion tests. And you can see with the classical Mises approach, we have an error of, the, of about 10% at the end with the maximum rotation, while with our, with our model, it's perfectly matched. And we can do the same reasoning with also the mix tension torsion test, even worse for the von Mises approach. Uh, almost 30% of error for the A40 test, 
while with our approach you see there is a very good agreement. Um, we can also analyze the stress paths of, uh, for some simulation, for some nodes. In particular, we are considering the A20 and, and A40 <coughs> simulation, so the mixed tension torsion test. As I said before, they, they are made by a pretensile test, pretensile phase, and then applying torque afterwards. And mm, we are considering two points the point in the outer surface of the specimen and the point in the middle of the thickness of the specimen corresponding to the netting section. And this is for the Mises approach, so not with our algorithm. And you can see that for both of the tests, the simulation, the first part, okay, doesn't, you can see well, very well this graph, but okay. Uh, for the first part in both of the tests, uh, it's uh, almost a uniaxial tensile test because it's just pretensioning. The pretension load for the A40 is greater than the A20. And then when we apply the torque, the stress path starts to differ from, differ from the inaccessible stress state. And of course, more for the node position in the outer surface because of course the, the shear is a greater, the greatest in the outer surface. And of course, Theoretically, in the axis of the specimen is pure tensile test. Okay, um, with the, with our model, there is some differences, little differences. We can see that <coughs> for both the nodes, for both the simulations, um, the stress path differs less from the theoretical uniaxial stress state uh, during during the test. So. In conclusion, we can see they say that uh, we developed a new YEL model based on the three variants of stress, and we tested with literature of experimental data. Then we obtained very good results. The calibrated model allows to reproduce all the experiments with greater accuracy with respect to the standard Mises like uh, finite element runs. And we I told you that we consider the constant QA parameter, and for this material was good, it worked very well. But for other material we are working on, probably it's, we need to upgrade this model, considering a function also for the QA parameter, function of the uh, plastic deformation. So this is what we are working on now. Thank you for your attention.